Welcome to Healthy Planet, Healthy Me. I'm your host, Sherry Beal. Throw Away Living, an article published in 1955 edition of Life Magazine represented easy living and freedom for mom. No more dishes, paper plates, plastics, and throwaway goods were the new fashion and craze. No one would have guessed that over a half a century later, the conundrum, damage, and devastation that this way of life would cause in future years. How many plastic bottles and containers have you gone through in your lifetime? Where do these plastics end up? What was a symbol of freedom then is now a floating garbage dump about the size of Africa created by Pacific currents. These currents are carrying refuse from North America, Asia, and the islands, concentrating it into a swirl of flotsam estimated to contain 3.5 million tons of junk, 80% of which is plastic. Well over 50 billion pounds of plastic is made annually in the United States alone. What toll is this playing on the health of our ocean that provides a much needed food supply for our booming population? And what can we do about it? We have someone very special joining us, Anna Cummins. She is the education advisor for the Algalita Marine Research Foundation and the founder of a campaign titled Bring Your Own. Welcome to Healthy Planet, Healthy Me, Anna Cummins. Hi, Sherry. Thank you for having me here. How did you get involved with this? Well, I was working in conservation in Santa Cruz, and I heard a presentation from Captain Charles Moore back in 2002, and I saw a documentary that changed my life. It's Algalita's signature documentary called Our Synthetic Sea. It can be purchased on the website, and it documents some of the research that you heard earlier from Captain Moore, that there were six times more plastic than zooplankton in the ocean. I was haunted for weeks after this presentation. So I contacted Algalita from Santa Cruz and uh, developed a relationship with Captain Moore and ended up going um, as a volunteer on a research trip of his down to Baja, down to Guadalupe Island. And there I saw evidence that shocked me. We were collecting stomach samples from Laysan albatross, beautiful birds. And this was an island, Guadalupe, that is not populated. So these birds were traveling out thousands of miles to forage for food for their young and regurgitating bellyfuls of plastic into their young. So when I saw this, um, I, was, I was stunned and I resolved to become part of Algolita. Tell, tell our listeners what you brought here today. Well, I brought a couple of things. One thing you you see here on this plate, this is an albatross bolus. Most people have heard of an owl pellet. This is the equivalent, but coming from an albatross. So the things that they can't regurgitate, I mean, they can't digest, um, these are coughed up. And you see here, it's mostly plastic. In a perfect world, you would see squid beaks and natural materials, but you see here fragments. Here it looks like a toothpaste cap. Here's other pieces of plastic toys, other plastic fragments. These were all inside the stomach of an albatross. I have one more thing that this, that's pretty shocking. We bring this to schools to show to school children because we do a lot of education outreach with Algalita. But you see here a string of lighters, of toothbrushes, of here's an action figure leg. Every single piece of debris you see here was pulled out of the carcass of an albatross on Midway Island. So a, a lot of pretty large objects. These are all intact. Toothbrushes are something that we all use every day. So this just shows us that we're all part of the problem. Golf ball, little little um, toys, pieces yep. of toys. Okay, listen, we have somebody out at sea, and he's calling in right now from a satellite phone. And um, joining us is Dr. Marcus Erickson. He's the Director of Research and Education for uh, the Agalita Foundation. And uh, he is the Junk, J-U-N-K, Director director, author, and paleontologist. Welcome to Healthy Planet, Healthy Me, Dr. Erickson. Hi, good afternoon. Glad to be on your show. Wow. So on the front of your um, website, uh, which will junkraft.com, it says sailing to Hawaii on 15,000 plastic bottles and a Cessna 310 to raise awareness about plastic fouling our oceans. We call it junk because it is made of junk. 15,000 plastic bottles uh, 20 old sailboat masts made into our deck, all mashed together. And sitting on top of that is our cabin, an old aircraft, uh, which is really durable, lightweight, and can withstand high wind. And we've been at sea now three months and only three days to go. And we have planned to be at sea for six weeks. Uh, and now 12 weeks later, we really can't wait to get home. Okay, why did you stay 12 instead of six weeks? Uh, well, the first week our raft uh, began to sink. So actually, Anna, who's there, she and a rescue party came out to help us repair the raft. 
And then it was very slow going. We're averaging about uh, 1.5 knots, about a walking pace uh, to, to travel 2,800 miles. So it's taken much, much longer than expected. Uh, but luckily, we've been able to catch fish along the way. But actually, one fish that I caught three days ago uh, called a rainbow runner, um, I, I filleted the fish intending to eat it, and I opened its stomach out of curiosity, and I found 14 fragments of plastic in a fish no bigger, bigger than a palm in your hand. I, w- I could not believe that uh, uh, that animals are consuming, well, I know animals consume plastic, but to see it firsthand was pretty appalling. Um, I saw the little the video on your website, so I know we can we can uh, check that out, um, and and to yeah. actually to visually see it, it's very powerful. Uh, what would you like to say in in uh, closing, if if you want to leave us with a few words, because I know you you were real limited with your minutes there on the satellite yeah. phone. I think in closing is is about action, something that people can do right now. Number one is to bring your own, bring your own cloth bag to the grocery store, your own stainless steel water bottle, your stainless steel coffee mug, and stop using single-use disposables. We need a cultural shift. We're not going to clean the plastic in the ocean. It requires a cultural shift. And the second thing is to support legislation that's out there to either ban or put fees on disposable plastics. I mean, you can change in your own backyard, bring your own, and support legislation. That's, that's the solution to this issue. Excellent. Well, we want you to keep us posted. You, you have uh, how many more days left? I think Anna's going to um, uh, fly out to Hawaii and, and uh, greet you yes, guys. I can't wait. Yes. We have three days now. I'll say uh, we have exactly 175 miles to Honolulu. Thank you for everything that you're doing, uh, Dr. You. Marcus Erickson, and all the best to you. Be safe. Thank you so much. All the best. I'll see you in Oahu. Take care. I'll see you soon, sweetie. Thank you so much for joining us today, Anna Cummins, and coming into the studio. Thank you for having me here. On Healthy Planet, Healthy Me, and um, all the websites will be mentioned. Just go to kpfk.org and get to Healthy Planet, Healthy Me. You'll find all the information on today's show. We'll see you next week. Be well. We all live in a yellow